This is a regression tutorial in Python. We're going to be doing uh, two different methods, which are SciPy and Gecko. If you want to follow along with the source code, just click this link. And there's first of all how to do linear and polynomial regression, and then regression with Gecko or SciPy. So you can see the source code for both of these here. If you just select them, the one thing I will mention, if you do select it, just come down and do the git code. So it gives you unformatted text that you can copy in for your Python script. Okay, so that's it on the... Um, there's also uh, some tutorials in Excel and MATLAB. I'll also show you the MATLAB tutorial on how to do the same regression just as a comparison to what's available in Python. So in regression analysis, we often want to fit a model, uh, the blue X's, there to the measured values, which are the red circles. And in this case, we have a correlation, which is y equals a plus b divided by x plus c times natural log of x. And so this is uh, this is really just a linear regression, but you could also do nonlinear analysis as well. Okay, you could also do z times b, where z equals one over x plus c times uh, let's say w where w equals natural log of x. Okay, so this would be a linear regression, but we're just going to leave it in the original nonlinear form for our purposes today. So let's get started with this. I'm just going to show you the code in Python SciPy and also in Gecko, and just talk a little bit about the differences between the two and why you might want to use one uh, versus the other. Okay, so we have our imports there we're just going to import gecko versus import scipy optimize minimize and then we have our data same data in both cases and then in scipy what we're going to do is define our predicted values right there with the function of a b and c and if you recall that's our correlation right here and then in gecko we're going to do the same thing but we're going to define an equation and uh, for the natural log you always use log and if you have a log base 10, you use log 10. Okay, and then in, uh, in SciPy, we're going to define an objective, which is our sum of the normalized uh, squares. So we have our y predicted minus y measured divided by y measured, and then we square that, and we sum up all of the data points from i to uh, equals 1 to n. So we have n number of data points that we're going to try to fit and we're going to minimize that objective. And so in Gecko we're going to find an objective uh, in that same way. Okay, we have some initial guesses here. Our initial guesses are embedded in the parameter definitions in Gecko where you say value equals zero. You can also set lower and upper bounds in Gecko as well as in SciPy. Okay, so there's some right there. Uh, and then you put those in as maybe the third variable. You say that has to be between negative 100 and 100. And these are really, you know, no bounds. Negative uh, 10 times 10 to the 10th, uh, or sorry, negative 1 times 10 to the 10th, and uh, positive 1 times 10 to the 10th. So just kind of unlimited. In Gecko, it's uh, plus or minus 1 times 10 to the 20th. Okay, so just large numbers. And then in, uh, in, Python in SciPy, what we're going to do is this is the call actually that solves it right here. We're going to call scipy.optimize.minimize, and we imported that in a way that we just imported the minimize package right there. So we're going to call minimize, and we have our objective function, our initial guesses. We changed our method here to a successive uh, linear sequential quadratic program, and then we have our bounds as well. Okay, and then we uh, retrieve our solution and uh, do our new updated calculated values so that we can plot them. And then in, in Gecko, what we're going to do is we have our dependent, our, uh, you know, the factors that we're going to be uh, adjusting, which are A, B, and C. And then we have our data, which is X. And then we have our measured Y value and our predicted Y value. The measured ones are going to be parameters. And the predicted one is going to be a variable. And then we turn the status on for these. That means you make those available to the optimizer as degrees of freedom to minimize. 
Okay, the I mode equals two. That means regression mode. You can find a little bit more out about that. Um, if you just go and uh, type in uh, gecko I mode, and it'll have some documentation. Okay, so if you just go to the gecko site here, um, you'll see a lot of documentation about the different uh, modes of operation that you can run these models in. This one's going to be a model parameter update or regression, which is number two. Okay, coming back here, we have uh, you know the solve command. That's where it actually does the optimization. And then we're going to print out the final uh, uh, sum of squared error objective in both cases. Okay, so that's how you retrieve the solution. And then we'll also print the A, B, and C values in both cases. The next part is just plotting the solution, very similar in both cases, and they give the same answer. So the question arises, why would you want to use one or the other? So SciPy, one of the nice things about that is it's built into the SciPy package. There's nothing else that you need to install. With Gecko, you do need to do uh, you know, the import uh, Gecko. You can do pip install uh, Gecko from the command line. Okay, if you just do that, it'll get the latest version of Gecko for you. Okay, and also one other thing with uh, Gecko, it uses the AP Monitor backend, and that is available uh, for local solve on Windows. You just have to do uh, remote equals false for a local solve. That's only available for Windows right now, uh, but it will be available shortly for Linux. Uh, the other thing that Gecko uses is Gecko uses uh, automatic differentiation and exact first and second derivatives with possibly you know better solvers than are used in the SciPy uh, minimize uh, function. It uh, uses solvers such as IPopt or APopt, which are large-scale gradient-based optimizers uh, that utilize the first uh, derivatives, and IPopt uses uh, also the exact second derivatives to help you converge a lot faster. So uh, better solvers are available in Gecko. And uh, you know, the other than that, they give uh, very similar answers. Okay, I'll just show both of them running. I have the regression here in SciPy. I'll go ahead and run this one first. Okay, so that's going to run. There are my A, B, and C values, and there you can see the, the plot that's generated. And then in Gecko, let me run this one as well. Okay, just run this, and you'll produce uh, essentially the same uh, results, but instead of the SciPy minimize, we used IPopt solver, uh, the latest version of IPopt, and so there's the output from the AP monitor. Uh, back end that's uh, running the optimization problem for Gecko. Okay, I also want to show the MATLAB as well, just as a comparison. Uh, you know, I've I like to use MATLAB and uh, Python. Um, so, the, you know, here's how to, how it's done in fmincon. I've previously showed a tutorial video on this one, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, but the main thing is that it's very similar to SciPy. Uh, optimize, minimize, and it uh, uses uh, you know finite differencing for the gradients, uh, you know, versus Gecko. Again, that uses um, automatic differentiation uh, and potentially faster convergence because it has exact uh, first and second derivatives. But this, uh, you define the. Actually, it's it's kind of more similar to the uh, this one on the very left. I'm going to make this kind of small, so you might need to go to 1080p to see all of this. Um, but essentially, uh, you're defining your uh, prediction function right here. You're defining your objective function, and then you call fmincon. A lot of these are optional arguments right here. You could put in some lower and upper bounds, for example, and change these. But you need to put in empty ones in between right there for your inequalities and your equality linear constraints. And then you can finally put in your lower and upper bounds. Okay, but very similar. Even the plotting is very similar as well. You can see uh, the difference between that and uh, something like in in Python. 
okay you basically just have the plt dot in front of it and it's almost equivalent to what you see in matlab okay so uh, again the the uh, all the source code for this is available here on the website both in matlab and also in python i hope you enjoyed this video